Hey everyone, it's Kelly for Soy and Shay and thank you for joining me for another cheeky midweek video. Today I'm making the embeds to go on the soap that will feature in Saturday's video and I thought I'd take you along and show you how I'm making them. So the soap will feature some soap curls and I'm going to make them using some cold processed soap. So I just want to make up a very simple batch of um, soap here that is maybe two colours. Um, but nothing too fancy and then we're going to make some soap curls out of it. Now because it's not a very fancy batch of soap I'm going to use what is called the heat transfer method of soap making and the idea behind that is that you use the heat that is generated from mixing your sodium hydroxide with your distilled water to melt down any of your solid oils and butters that is in your recipe. So the first thing I'm going to do is just pop my oils to the one side here. Now normally when you're mixing your hydroxide and your water together, make sure you're working in a well ventilated area. I do have a window just above my um, counter here, so I do know that my fumes are going to go out that way. And I will be putting a face mask over my face while those fumes are actually evaporating out. What I'm going to do is very gently pour my pre-measured sodium hydroxide into my distilled water give it a stir and when it becomes clear that's when I'm going to add it into my bucket of oils here I'm just going to take the temperature of this so you can see what it's come up to so we're sitting at about 85-86 degrees Celsius and if I flip that over that is about 185 to 188 degrees Fahrenheit so that heat is what is going to actually melt this down so now what I'm going to do is just very gently pour this into my bucket and then I will give it a blend with the stick blender and that heat as I said will melt down this oil that's in here Okay, so that is now all melted down and it is blended together. It's sitting at about a medium trace and that is one of the things I have discovered when working with this heat transfer method because you are working so hot, the soap will actually trace that little bit quicker. This is just my experience and that could be because of the oils that I'm using. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do two different colours. So I'm going to put some lime spider mica into that pot there. Oops, that was just a box falling off the table. And I have some chartreuse mica which I'm going to add into this bucket. I'm going to give it a quick um, blend together. I'm then going to do a in the pot swirl and then pop it straight into the mold. So I'm going to scrape out my bucket and then I'm going to let this sit overnight just to set up and then we will come back tomorrow and we will make the soap curls ready for the soap. So we are back the next day and we are going to take this piece of soap out of this mould. Now you can see I have got soda ash on the top of it. I'm not too worried about that because it's not the top that I'm using. This is still quite soft but that is okay because it's... I need to be able to make some soap curls with it. So what I'm going to do is actually flip this over onto the other side. I am going to get my cheese slicer and I am just going to run that across the bottom here like so. And the reason I want this so soft is because I'm now going to roll them up and make myself some little soap curls with them. And I'm going to roll it just on a little bit of an angle maybe. We don't need to use the whole piece. So I can maybe just go like that. And move on to the next one. Anything that I don't use from out of this log of soap, I will wrap up into some um, cling film. And then I will end up putting that into my bag with all of my other soap dough. And I can then use that for other projects along the way. Okay, so we're just going to roll these ones up and I'm putting them on a little bit of an angle because I want them to go down into the soap a little bit. So I'm just going to wrap them up like so. 
and as I leave them on the side to dry they should start to really hold their shape. So I am absolutely loving the colour effect that we're getting off these. These are quite translucent pieces of soap that we're shaving off, but that is just perfect for what I am intending on this next soap. I'll get this one rolled up, and as you can see, we've got so much colour and texture going on in here that these little soap curls are going to look really good on this bar of soap. We'll just get that one. Oh, we'll tear that piece off. We don't really need it. Okay, so I'm thinking now I actually don't need them at quite as um, long as what some of these are. So what I'm doing is just twisting them back down on top of themselves just to get them a little bit shorter and a little bit thicker. If they're not quite going, I'm just going to unroll them and go. Because I've sliced these so thin, they are drying up quite quickly, which means that I can actually get a little bit more play with them, get them to go the way I want them to and that is looking much better for what I'm hoping to achieve. So I'll get these ones rolled up as well. I'm really loving how the swirl has come through and it's just adding so much more texture and dimension to these soap swirls. So hopefully the sort of look that I'm after in this soap is going to really come through. So we get that one rolled up a little bit tighter. And the other thing that is really adding texture and interest to this soap is the glycerin rivers and I know I've said before that I don't mind glycerin rivers in my soap but if you remember we didn't put any titanium dioxide in this soap but I still have glycerin rivers granted that these colors are actually made up using some chromium oxide green some iron oxide and titanium dioxide but I wouldn't have thought there was enough in there to really create those glycerin rivers like you do when you make a white base soap so it's very interesting to actually eventually if someone can work out what really causes glycerin rivers in soaps but I'm really liking the sort of look that it's giving to these soap swirls it just gives it a whole new sort of look there as well so let's keep going we'll grab another piece here and I'm thinking those tighter more shallow um, curls are going to be better I'm still rolling them on a slight angle just to get again a little bit more interest on those soap curls so that's what they're going to look like I'm going to keep getting these ones done and then we will move on to making the soap. So I hope you've enjoyed watching how I am making my soap curls for my next soap. Uh, if you did, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. If you haven't already, why not subscribe to the channel and if you hit that little bell sign, it will let you know when I bring up Saturday's video so you can see what we're going to be doing with these soap curls. So until then, have a great week and thank you for watching. Bye.